Hey everybody, this is uh, Peter Adams, and I am here with um, a tutorial from BlenderMadeEasy.com. Today, uh, I figured I'd do... I've recently been messing around with some features such as bevel and the inset faces, and I found a few just fun things that we did to do, and um... <laughs> I'm going to... In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a chain, but it's going to be a very special chain. It's going to be a neon chain. It'll make more sense once we start doing it. And if you're new to Blender, uh, if and you're having a trouble figuring out what I'll what I'm doing, I'm going to try and explain as much as I can. But in the event I forget, which I frequently do, this right here will be showing. This box right here will be showing exactly what I'm doing. So just follow the instructions down there if I happen to forget uh, to say what to do. Anyway, let's jump right into this. First, delete the cube. And we're going to do Shift A, Mesh, add a torus. Now we could mess around with how many rings and whatnot we want, but I don't want to do that right now. We're not, it's not going to be, you know, I, I don't want to, that kind of shape, the longer shape. I'm just going to stick with just this nice little ring right here. Hit tab to go into edit mode. And it makes it a lot easier if we go into face select, so click that box down there. And if we were doing a normal object for this part, I would prefer to do control B and do a bevel to get the effect I want but as you can see when we try and do do this the the torus just doesn't like it so we're gonna do control Z go back and we're going to do hit I to inset and hit I again and this will inset each face individually I have been wanting to know how to do this for the longest time and I've just recently <laughs> figured it out um, now we're going to go down here, click this button right here, and hit individual origins. What this will do is when we hit E to extrude, look at all those normals. <laughs> and then S to scale. Oh, no, no, no. Didn't want to do that. Just E. There we go. And do it. See right, you can see kind of, I can't really point to it. Right, right there where you can see they're overlapping, just take it right to where they're not overlapping and making a mess of things. And here we have it. This is essentially the basic shape of our chain. And the goal is we're going to put the neon all along the inside. So if we go tab to go back in edit mode, and uh, I'm going to hit T to get rid of our toolbar over there, get it out of the way drag this along over here oh most important part make sure you are using cycles render always forget about that click the little materials button hit new and it's always nice when you're doing something like this so you don't have to go around and select each face individually get the materials made even if you don't um, just get the materials assigned to the parts you want and then start messing around with um, with the more tricky modeling. That's just something I've found. So we're going to do material 1, assign it. Then we're going to do that to get the new material. Open that up and hit control I to select the invert. Sometimes I've found that when you try and select the invert faces, it doesn't always deselect the last few faces, so just hit Control z and do it over a few times, and uh, it, it'll do it, hopefully, on the second try. Now we have the materials made, and I don't want to mess with the materials quite yet. So right now, I'm going to hit... Ooh, go back into Object Mode, hit Shift-D to duplicate it, and R, and rotate it on the X-axis by 90 degrees. There we go drag that over till it's you know I don't like to get 
too fussy about this, but you know, sometimes it need, it's nice to have it. Because you don't want it to look too disconnected, but you don't want them to be running into each other. And here's the, the basics of our chain. Now we're going to select this guy, hit the wrench, add a modifier array. And I found that setting the offset to 1.2 usually does it. Might have to mess around with it depending on what it's doing. And yeah, that looks that looks about right. And yeah. And just for those who are very new to Blender, make sure you have your number lock on on your number pad so you can um, see what's going on here. So you can type in there. I always I always leave my number lock off because when I'm doing Blender or on my computer at night it gets annoying. So let's set this count to 10. And then we're going to make select this torus, add modifier array, set this to 1.2. Very important that they are at the same. And 10. Now let's go back to the end of the line. And yeah, it's looking good. So now let's take these modifiers and apply them. Hit shift and right click and hit control J to merge the objects together. Now I'm going to go into the tools menu. Set origin, origin to geometry. And that just makes, you know, navigating, setting everything up a lot easier when you have a central pivoting point. Now be careful when you're doing the uh, bevel and inset and all that crazy stuff to get this cool meshed design. Because look at our vertices count. It, it's pretty pretty impressive just for you know the the few how long have we been doing this seven minutes I've just been sitting here doing this and it's not even particularly fancy it'll just eat your uh, eat your processor if you do it too much so next up we're going to get down to materials and to test this I want to get rid of our lamp because it's going to be neon, and I like to have a nice dark area for my neon. So we have the two materials. Material 1 is on the interior. Material 2 is for the exterior. So I'm going to click Material 1. Come down here. Say, get rid of my toolbox. Come down here. Set it to scroll up till you find... I think I missed it. Emission. Here we go. I want to go with green but a dark green yeah I'm gonna set the emission value to I don't know three no two I'm just looking up in that to see what it's gonna look like and let's take material two and we're going to let's just uh, set it to a simple glossy I don't know why right now I always it always sets me to GGX I prefer to use Beckman because that's I think that's default I somehow got away from the default and it doesn't like me anymore set that uh, I want some reflection and I'm just again looking up there oh here we go preview just look in here or right there and you can kind of get a basic idea of what's going on and I'm gonna set the world value use nodes strength zero here we go now let's hit shift Z and we can oh my gosh hmm I did something wrong uh, what did I do I never assigned the new material that's what I did wrong. Yes, always be sure to click that assign button because had I clicked the wrong thing and had to 
select all of the loops again, I would just restart the video and rage quit. <laughs> but, now, it, I'm not liking how much reflection is there. That's a little too much. Actually, I think we can fix that by darkening the color a little bit. Yeah, you still have, uh, from what I can see, it's hard to tell until you actually get a, a really nice render. But you still have a little bit of reflection in there, but it's not it's not overkill. But we hit, uh, scroll out, we can see that we've got a pretty sick looking chain. Now, you can just stop with that and be boring, or we could do all sorts of fun stuff. In the render I did earlier, I kind of did this thing. I just you know, mushed them together till they looked nice. In this video, I want to see if I can make, like, a chain mail, almost. Neon chain mail. Shift D. Uh, bring it up on the Z axis until, until the two edges right about there are touching. And I think if we just do, huh, R, X 90 then we drag it back a little bit bring it down a little bit and then shoot it forward a little bit okay that's actually pretty cool and what we can do here is if we take this and add a new material by clicking that button. It'll be the same material, but it'll just have a different material number, because if I hadn't done that every time I changed that one, this one would change too. This chain set, and wow, I'm suffering from these. And we can take this and change the color to... oh, that... Mm, it's there. There. Now that looks cool. Okay. Then we can continue making our chainmail. So if we hit Shift D, Z, let's just copy the process we did there. Take it up there. RX90. Shift. I want to kind of alternate which way I'm shifting, so I'm going to shift it over that way so that we don't offset it too much. No. Yeah. I've forgotten what I'm doing. Take it. Uh, yes, I know what I'm doing now. But I don't know if it's going to work. Let's I'm going to go to the other side. Just just mess around with it till you till you can get it. And I think this isn't going to work. Because we're running into our original chain and making a mess of things. So what if we tried going down to the bottom? Good plan. I'm sorry if this is a little slow. I'm just messing around here. Uh, I think if we do rotate X like 45, another 45, and then we drag it this way, we're kind of doing it, <laughs> okay, I don't know, I'm, this is sad, because I should know how to make chain mail, um, you know, we could spend all day trying to get the chains to fit together, but whatever works, just stick with that, I guess. I'm just going to stick with this for right now. I, I, I might go on later and really futz with it to get it to look nice, but for now, I'm going to call this good. Maybe. <laughs> I, I, I really want to fix this. work? 
Does that work? Yes! That works! Ha ha! I did it! I think. There we go! Yes! Yes, we did it! We have created a wonderful mess of vertices and faces beyond the counting. And I'm going to stop now before I completely destroy my computer. You could use an array and just go all the way and and all that fun stuff that you can think of. But I'm just going to stick with uh, delayed reaction. Oh, this is going to take forever, isn't it? There we go. I'm going to stick with this because it's already taking forever to render. Okay, so I guess next up we're going to find our camera. Lock camera to view and end panel. Hit zero on the number pad to find our camera. It's actually, I'm going to select all of this. Center my camera on it with period. Let's see, what, what would be a good angle? Maybe like right... Right... Right here. Let's go with that. Unlock the camera. Scroll in a little bit too much. There we go. Shift Z. Let's see what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm just going... I kind of want to get that right there. So I'm going to lock our camera to our view again. And slip it over here. A little bit of that. I kind of like... I really like having a really close foreground so that you can see the pattern and how everything's working together. And then see it fade off into the distance and how it looks from farther away. And we're getting nice reflections in here. And from here, we can sit down and fine-tune our materials. Okay, that was a minor heart attack I just had there because I thought my blender was going to crash. I'm going to... Let's see. Let's try turning our roughness down just a hair. And we never changed this material. Should, so it should be universal and change the glossy material for all of the links. Let's see. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. You know, not enough gloss, and it just looks too sharp. Too much gloss, and it will look just kind of uh, jagged and ugly. And, you know, I kind of like that because I'm really looking at this chain here. Because you've got the blue reflections right there and the green right there. And I'm really liking that. So, let's get out of rendered view. Uh, stop locking our camera because I like it right there. Again, if you want to challenge your computer, go all the way. Just keep going. But, again, uh, actually... It might be a good idea, right here. Should have done this a while ago. Save our file. So let's uh, neon chain. I can type. Okay, from right here, I'm going to experiment a little bit. Box select all of them, and see if it looks better with. Smooth shading. Ooh. Huge difference already. Let's go to our camera. And get a render going. Hmm. That is vastly different, just taking away part of the shading. 
And I guess we're gonna have to wait for it to go a little more. I like parts of it. Like, I think if I was sitting with the camera right here, I would like that more because you get a little more of the smooth on the edges. And But you really need to be able to see, have a direct shot at the neon because it's not coming through and reflecting off of the interior as well. But I'm liking the amount of reflection we get on the tops. You know, do whatever you like for simplicity's sake. I'm just going to go with flat and use that camera angle we already have set up. So if you want to move the camera over and uh, set it to smooth shading, but uh, I kind of like this myself. Next up, we're going to get down to the fun part of rendering. This is what we've been waiting for. And I'm still not liking how... I feel like I'm constantly tripping myself up about this. I dare. I'm going to call that good. Uh, da, 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 da. Sampling. Open up the sampling window in your render folder. File, slip, tab, whatever you want to call it. I've heard a million different versions of that. Uh, nudge the camera more. Be Again, it's just a lot of messing around with it and finding what you like personally. So feel free to sit and fiddle with it all day long. I'm trying to do this fast. Um, I'm going to use one, use 500 samples. And I don't know if we need to mess with the clamp. I think with just 500 samples, that should get us uh, clean up some of the noise we're having. So that should that should be good. So then just scroll up here and render it out. So this should take quite some time. So I'm going to stop the recording here and once I'm back I will jump back in and we will get right into talking about compositing. Okay, Okay, here we are again, and our render is finished, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier on. If you have a slow computer that just will not handle, you know, 622,000 vertices, what you can do is uh, just go back to the start of this tutorial, and over here when you add the torus, you can go and change how many segments you want you know like you can even go down to 10 that way and actually one fun trick that you can use uh, that I use all the time is blender can do math so if you just come over here and you know you want to just half as many you can cut the polys literally in half by just doing divided by 2 and then over here divided by 2 all of these little panels, they they will do simple math functions. Anything that can be input through the number pad. So, yeah, that's super useful. And then it'll work just the same way. Just inset. And... Whoops. Forgot a step. Just inset and come in. Oh, this is... <laughs> I'm having all these issues. Here we go. There we go. Now we're doing. Now we're doing good. Yeah, just that's one way you will have literally cut your poly count in half, and then just follow the the steps with just this uh, more low poly example. And this would actually look look pretty cool still. So mess around with that if your computer just will not handle this many vertices. Anyway. I don't know if I'm going to spend too much time on it, but I said I was going to do some compositing. I kind of like this the way it is. 
But I said I was going to do some compositing, and so I'll just, uh, for those of you who don't know uh, what compositing is, I'll, I'll just dabble with it for just a little bit. And for Windows, a uh, quick tip for Windows 8 users, uh, you know how if you try and hit F3 to save it, it changes your brightness. You have all these useless buttons that you never really use anyway. If you hit FN, which is right next to your left control, and the Windows button, and F3, it works just like a standard button. I haven't figured out a way to fix this, but Windows 8.1 user, 8.1, 8 users, uh, that's very useful. So I'll just save this real quick. Whoops. Done that too many times. Just save that wherever you want. And uh, compositing. Compositing, it's just a really quick, fun way to make your pictures, to make your renders look just a whole lot, a whole lot more interesting and unique. So you just click that button right there. Go down to compositing. I am still fairly new to compositing myself, um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Get rid of all the windows I don't want. Hmm. Where did my screencast go? I guess that only works in 3D view. Uh, so yeah, sorry, my, my screencast keys are gone. So first thing for compositing is you're going to click the Use Nodes button. This is going to give you your image and your composite. Everything in between is up to you. We're also going to click down here, go to Rendered Result, and we have a very nice, very nice view of what's going on. So let's start with going down Shift A and going into Color. Use one of my favorite nodes of all time, the brightness and contrast. So just, you know, you can mess around with this, I don't think. I think the brightness is about right. You know, boosting the contrast give you kind of a darker, more geometric look right there. And then lowering the contrast, it just kind of messes with things. But if we lower the contrast and then Shift A again, add a gamma node, I think we can get it back into its happy place. Yeah, see, now we have just, just kind of the... We've gotten rid of all the reflection. And, yeah, again, with compositing, it really is just messing around with it until you, until you get what you like. It, it's just a way of uh, nudging things around until it gets just exactly what you want. And hit Shift A. Let's go down to the filter and do another wonderful node. Another personal favorite of mine, the glare node. This gives you streaks, ghosts, uh, fog glow, simple star, just all kinds of fun things to give, especially these more neon looking. Oh, that's too much. Neon looking uh, renders. And as we can see, going full glare node is not doing a thing for us. There we go. You got a little bit of uh, glow in there. All this node does is it will just... Um, it just kind of takes those and adds a, well, a fog to it, and I'm, I'm doing a terrible job at explaining this, I know. Um, it just gives it that little little bit of a glowing effect, brightens things up a little bit, gives you more highlight, and the mix, this just shows how much you want to show the, act, the actual effect of the node versus the render. So just going full here, this is only what the node is generating. So just mess around with this till you get it where you like it. And we can also do streaks. If that suits your fancy and make it all, all but dazzled and sparkly. Honestly, I don't really have a good way of explaining what half of these uh, buttons 
and switches and levers and knobs do so as I've said it's it's just messing around with it until and figuring it out how everything works until you get it the way you like it and I'm really not liking the kind of sparkly look if that's your thing go with it but it's not it's not doing much for me right now so we're going to experiment with our ghosts this will just kind of take the image and wrap it all together spin it around and then play it all over again in this big circle and this this is really the prime example of just mess around with it because it is one of the trickiest nodes I've ever tried to figure out but it can make something look incredibly nice and actually I found it works really well if we go down if I can find where they put it here we go we use the sunbeams it looks I think I think the sunbeams is is kind of a tricky one to try and use so I feel like we're going to have to use some kind of a mix node and again all this does is it just takes two things and shoves them together and spits out what's left and holy jeez we just entered warp speed And if you get what I'm saying, with all this compositing shenanigans that I've been blabbing about, that's fantastic. If you are totally confused and lost and have no idea what the heck I'm doing, um, it, it just takes time. Figuring out the way that Blender kind of understands things and tries to figure things out, it, it does. It just takes a whole lot of just messing around until it until it looks nice. Now, this is interesting. I've never tried doing this before. He's using a glare node. All we're doing is we're just taking these things and connecting them together and each of them does a different thing. And again, you just have to figure it out, really. But I've never tried doing this where you take the the glare and use it instead of as and use it as the something for another node to figure out on its own. And these just change the angles right here. I'm very pretty new to the sunbeams node. Don't exactly know what it does entirely, but it looks like we're moving very fast right now. And uh, again, just mess around with it. You can you can play with all these different nodes like uh what what does this one do? Let's let's Figure this out. I have never used this node before. Just just play with it. I mean, once you figure it out, Blender's really just a big playground for you to mess around with. All I really wanted to do was kind of show you all the basic functions. You just grab, drag, and insert. And after that, it's just kind of figuring out the way that Blender likes to, likes to do things. But, I figure I will f f finish this, get it looking nice, and I that doesn't appear to be doing anything at all, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm just going to mess around with this until I get it just how I want it. Let's get that a really high value, see what it does. And this one will do like a negative value. Bigger ray lengths. This is this is really interesting. What I did here is because the uh, the ghosts, the sunbeam is just creating. Like if I just I can show you what's going on here. If we got rid of that is the picture is going into the contrast node which is going into the glare node which 
it uses to create the transparent sunbeam image. Because this is what the glare node is generating. Right here. And then you shove that into the sunbeams and mix that through the mix node back into the diffuse image or the, the solid non-transparent image. I wonder if you can still use the sunbeams if you're if you're doing a, a JPEG image. Anyway, uh, I think I'm just going to go... We've had enough fun and experimentation. I think I'm just going to go for simplicity. And go back to my... Just using the fog glow. This happens a lot, believe it or not is I will sit here and do all these complicated things with the nodes and just end up going back to a more a simple simpler design and setup because sometimes going overkill overboard and just completely throwing things off can be worse than a, a node a composite that is too complicated can sometimes just be worse than not compositing at all. So it's good to know when to stop. But it's also fun to just mess around. Anyway, I have already wasted way too much time. So here we have it. Is our neon chainmail. If you're happy with this, be happy. Save it. Use it as a wallpaper. Do whatever you want with it. If you're not happy, um, you know, just mess around with it. So, thanks for watching. This will be uh, my first tutorial, so sorry if I'm kind of derpy and awkward, but thanks for holding together, and I hope you got a lot out of this Blender Made Easy tutorial.